Hi everyone and welcome to Math Sucks. This video is going to help you pass the Algebra 2 Common Core Regions. We're doing this one question at a time. Here is question 25. Given x is a real number, write the expression in simplest a plus bi form. So I'm just going to rewrite it below. So the first thing I'm going to want to do here is just distribute and FOIL these two binomials here. So when we do that, we'll get x times 3, which gives us 3x plus x times minus 2xi. So let's bring this down to plus 2x squared i. Okay, so now let's see if we can combine any like terms. Notice we have a minus 2x squared i and a plus 2x squared i. So these are actually going to cancel each other out. And so there's no other like terms we can combine, but notice this i squared, we, this actually is equal to minus one. So let's rewrite what we have so far, three x plus six i, and then this was a minus one, so this minus four is gonna be a plus four x, because this i squared became a minus one. So now we can combine like terms here, we have a three x plus a four x, which gives us seven x plus six i. And that's our answer. Solve 3.8 times e to the 1.5 t equals 16 algebraically for t to the nearest hundredth. So first, let's rewrite it, 3.8 e. Here, the first thing I'm gonna do is try and get uh, this e to the 1.5 t alone. So let's divide out 3.8 from both sides. And when we do that, we get e to the 1.5t is equal to this long decimal here. So I'm just gonna write it the whole decimal. And now we can write this, since this is an e, we're gonna write ln, the natural log. So the ln of this number that we just got is equal to that exponent 1.5t. Because right, this has, well, Latin, the natural log always has a natural base of e. Now we can just divide out to get this t alone 1.5. And we'll plug this into our calculator. So ln, and then instead of typing out this whole thing, I'm just gonna go second answer. And then I'm gonna divide this by 1.5. And then we get this number. t is equal to 0.95839. And, but they wanted this rounded to the nearest hundredth, so tenth hundredth, so this is going to be 0.96. Question 27. In an attempt to get the student body's opinion of a new dress code, members of the statistics class surveyed the students of the first period computer science class. Explain a statistical bias in the method of data collection. So the problem here is that they're only going to one class, and it's the first period and it's a computer science class. So this is biased because, you know, maybe computer science is an elective and it's early in the morning and maybe some students don't even come in to the class. Maybe they, they slept in late. Maybe they're not in there. The whole school is not represented by one morning computer science class. So, so we're going to need to just write out this, write this out a little bit. So it's biased for students in first period computer class, which doesn't represent the whole school, would be better to survey students randomly throughout the school and throughout the day in different classes. Question 28. Sketch a graph of polynomial p of x given the criteria below. And we're given that p of x has zeros only at negative five, one, and four. And then we're given its n values, which we'll get into. So let's focus 
on what they give us. Let's focus on this first bullet point. So P of X has zeros only at negative five, one, and four. So let's put those in. So we have, here's negative five, here's one, and here's four. Okay, so now let's look at the next part of this this next bullet point here. And I'll, I'm gonna just sketch a little bit on the side. So these two next bullet points are gonna tell us the end behavior of our polynomial. And this will give us a little insight into what this polynomial is gonna look like and what degree it goes to. So it says here as x approaches infinity. So x approaches infinity, so we're going this way y is going to negative infinity so y is going down so it, this graph is going to end going this way for the end behavior now this next part here as x approaches negative infinity so they're going this way negative x values y is approaching negative infinity also so the end behavior of our polynomial is going to be facing down so because um, we're going to have two end behaviors going the same direction, we know that this is going to have to be an even degree polynomial. So let's say that this is going to have, this should have four zeros altogether, four, four zeros, uh, like as if it was x to the fourth, an even degree. We only, they only give us three zeros, right? So that means we're going to have to make one a double, make it a squared or make it a tangent to the x-axis. So let me write out the zeros they gave us so far. And notice that this polynomial is facing down, which means it's also going to be negative. So that's another thing this end behavior tells us. So I'm going to write p of x down here. So, so far with p of x, based on the zeros they gave, they gave us, we have x plus 5 x minus 1 and x minus 4 and this whole thing is negative so we only have three zeros one two three we don't give us any more information but we're gonna have to just make something up so i'm just gonna square this x plus 5 squared here and say that that's our fourth zero and based on that we can sketch out our graph so our end behavior is down and here's where minus five is our zero that we're having a two of. So because of that, we're because of this two, we're gonna have this when we draw it out, gonna be tangent. So tangent to the x-axis. So because this is just touching the x-axis, that means that's gonna represent that x plus five is squared here. And then we could just go along and fill in the rest of our graph, sketching what this might look like with the M, making sure that our M behavior matches and we end up going down. So the key points that we found in this graph is the M behavior that they gave us based on over here. And then we have this tangent that we kind of randomly chose X plus five squared, but it has to be one of them. You could choose a different one, X minus one squared, and you would have a different looking graph. And then we wanted to make sure that we hit all those zeros, negative five, one, and four, which they gave us for this part over here. So there's a lot of different aspects to think about. You're thinking about the end behavior, the degree, whether the graph is facing up or down, making sure it hits all the zeros and being aware of any tangents based on the degree value. So in this case, we had it to add one, but that's our answer. Question 29. The height above ground of a Ferris wheel car can be modeled by the function h of t, and they have this whole long thing here, where h is measured in feet and t is measured in minutes. State the period of the function and describe what the period represents in the context. So there's a nice formula for period we can use. The period is always equal to 2 pi over the absolute value of the frequency. So the frequency can just be found in here. It's 2 pi over 5. So we have two pi over the absolute value of the frequency, which is two pi over five. And then we're just gonna do some math here. We'll get two pi times five over two pi, fraction rules. These two pi's cancel out and we're left with five. So 
the period is equal to 5. So this also asks for uh, us to describe what the period represents in this context. So in this context, um, the 5 represents the number of minutes for the wheel to go around one time. So we'll just write a little sentence. Question number three, solve algebraically for all values of x. And here we're just going to, I'm going to rewrite this. So since we're dealing with fractions, I'm just gonna rewrite this and multiply everything so they get a common denominator. So we wanna multiply this entire fraction, uh, numerator and denominator by x over x. This whole thing we wanna do at times x plus five over x plus five. And then for five, we're gonna do x squared plus five x, which is gonna be the common denominator for all. So let's do that. We get eight x for x squared plus five x minus three x minus, I'm just distributing minus three times x minus three times five, which will give us minus 15 over x squared plus five x and then equal to 5x squared plus 25x. And then don't forget, this is gonna be in the denominator all over x squared plus 5x. Now that they notice they all have a common denominator, x squared plus 5x, we can actually just drop this denominator and write out 8x minus 3x minus 15 equals 5x squared plus 25x. Since there, it's all common denominator, we can just drop the denominator totally and focus on the numerator. And then we can combine like terms and bring everything to one side. So, well, first we can combine like terms here. 8x minus 3x will give us 5x minus 15. So everything on one side, we get 5x squared plus 20x plus 15 equals zero. And notice uh, we have 5x squared, a 20x, and a 15. So we could actually just divide this whole thing by five to get this x squared alone. So we'll get x squared plus 4x plus three equals zero. And now we can factor this using product sum. So we have the product equals three, the sum equals four. We get one in factors one and three. Where x equals negative one and x equals negative three. And then we can check on the side. Always wanna check on the side to make sure our numbers are right, especially when dealing with fractions. So first let's plug in negative one into the original equation. So this checks out five equals five. So we know x equals negative one is gonna be one of our answers. And now let's check our other number, negative three. And this also checks out five equals five. So X equals negative three is also our answer. So we have X is equal to negative three and negative one. Question 31. The transportation methods used by the upperclassmen at Calhoun High School are summarized in the table below. Are the events being a junior and driving to school independent? Use statistical evidence, justify your answer. So the whole thing here, if you look at this, we have a table that separates juniors and seniors by driving, taking the bus and walking. And they're asking if being a junior, so let's call it being a junior probability of A, and driving to school, let's say, probability of B are independent. So if we're asking if something is independent, what we're really asking is, is P of A given B equal to P of A? So if P of A given B is equal to P of A, then independent. So what we're gonna be doing is finding P of A and P of A given B and seeing if they're equal to each other. And if they are, they're gonna be independent. So let's first find P of A, which we said is the probability of being a junior. 
So if we look at probability of being a junior, we want to add up all the juniors and then the total number of all the students, all total number of juniors and seniors. So the total number of juniors is just going to be 58 plus 75 plus 12, right? These are all the juniors which is 145 out of the total number of all the people, juniors and seniors. So that's going to be um, 81 plus 39 plus 12, and then plus the number of juniors we just found, 145. So this is 277. And we just add it up. I'll just write it out over here, everything we're adding. And now we can reduce this fraction, 145 divided by 277, and we get something like this, 0 0.5234657048. 4, 4. Okay, so this is total number of juniors over total juniors and seniors. Okay, so we found part A, the probability of juniors. Now let's find the probability of A given B, the probability of being a junior given that they're driving to school. So for this, we just need to look at the chart again. So we, we just want to focus on driving. So it's given that they're driving. So given that they're driving. So what's the total of people driving is 51 plus 81. And what is the probability that they're juniors given driving? So there's only 58 juniors who drive. And let's plug that in, 58 divided by 58 plus 81, and we'll get this number, 0.417266 So you can see that they're not gonna be equal to each other, so we know that they're not gonna be independent. Um, so I'll, I'll, let's just write a little sentence. I'm just also gonna say what these are. So this is junior that drives, total seniors and juniors that drive. And now let's write our little sentence. Uh, no And that's our answer. Question 32. Can f of x equals x cubed plus 7 be classified as an odd function? Justify your answer. So an odd function, uh, just a reminder, is when graphed, an odd function will be symmetrical about the origin mapping onto itself when rotated by 180 degrees about the origin. So I'll just make a little note about that. So this isn't our answer. I'm just defining for our own purposes to answer this question what an odd function is. So an, an odd function will be symmetrical about the origin mapping onto itself when rotated 180 degrees about the origin. So if you just get an image of what this is, look, we're gonna see if it's gonna be able to map onto itself if we flipped it 180 degrees. So, so let's just plug this into y equals x cubed plus seven graph. So if you look at this graph, it doesn't go through the origin. It looks like that. So because it looks like this, this is not gonna be symmetrical about the origin if we were to flip this 180 degrees. It would not map onto itself. So we're going to say, no, this is not an odd function. So this is not an odd function because f of x would not map it onto itself when rotated 180 degrees about the origin. So that's our answer for question 32. So this is the end of part two. Look out for part three coming out soon. Good luck and happy calculating. Need more practice? Check out mathsucks.org for more questions. Link below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Happy calculating.